All right, so this is going to be our um, second part of our tutorial series. Um, if you've watched the first one, or if you haven't watched the first one, go there first. Um, if you have watched the first one and you kind of messed with the game a little bit and died enough times and you're kind of curious about some other aspects of the game or just getting into the nitty gritty, then this video is for you. Basically, uh, the rest of uh, Dungeon Crawl and um, how to play a spellcaster. Um, first, the first thing you need to do is go to YouTube and uh, YouTube Skyrim Atmospheres and play this music um, because obviously Dungeon Crawl has no sounds. Uh, this is what always plays in the background of my videos uh, because it is the perfect uh, dungeon crawling music. Um, second, um, we are going to pick a name. Um, so let's go with something. Oops, I accidentally canceled the video. There we go. Alright, um, so let's see here. Um, we'll go with um, Frazzle. Alright, um, so my personal favorite, um, if you've watched any of my other videos, is playing spellcasters. I think that it just adds a lot more depth to this game. I think melee is cool, um, but it's a lot of just auto attacking, like just running into stuff, and I, I just like the options that spellcasting, um, presents. That's my preference when I play this game. Um, so, in general, I will always play a um, a deep elf uh, because they have the strongest magic capabilities. Um, easier to cast basically all all the spells a lot faster, but they are very fragile. They they are not very good at anything else. Um, but I'm okay with that. Um, and then we'll start with the we'll go with the wizard. Um, I enjoy the wizard. We'll play the wizard. Um, so. Now, for spells, um, the first thing I you want to do, obviously, if you watch the other video, which you should have, is go to manual. Um, because I'm a wizard, I'm going to not have spell casting. I'm going to have, uh, what is it, conjurations, I think. Yeah. Let me see what I got here. So, um, to see your spell inventory, like is, that's how I say it to remember it, but you just hold it's shift I. Um, that will show you all of your known spells, and it will tell you about them. So here I have a 10% chance of miscasting um, magic dart. If I, if you look at the bottom left here, uh, if I press exclamation point, it gives me more information: how much hunger it costs, what's the power level at in relation to its maximum power, and how far it goes, and what level spell it is. So magic dart is not a very good uh, chance. To, like ten percent is not terrible, but and you don't want to be failing that much. So I'd like to get conjurations um, up a little bit, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, the the second thing I want to do is if I hold sh if I press shift um, M as in Mary, that is basically memorize spells. Um, so this is the me. In my inventory, because I'm a spellcaster, I have the Book of Minor Magic, and by pressing Shift M, it allows me to memorize this spell. Because um, you can't cast it from the book, you have to memorize it. Um, you have a certain number of spell slots. I'm saying spell slots. Um, like uh, seven spell levels is what I have in the bottom left. You can see that, and that is um, every time I learn a spell, it's going to subtract the level of that spell from that number. So if I learn Blink here. It's, I'll have five spell levels left that I can learn. And you can increase this number by um, increasing your spell casting skill. Um, but for now, um, I can't train skills. I can't put um, experience into skills that I don't have the need for. So, if, for example, if, like, for example, like Conjure Flame, if I want to get Conjure Flame at a better percentage than 28%, then I have to start putting um, experience into Conjuration and Fire. That is the primary way of getting the failure rate down on a spell is to put experience into the schools that it is a part of. Um, obviously the more schools that spell is a part of the harder it's going to be to drop it down because it requires more experience spread out. Um, so I know playing a wizard, I want all of these spells. That's why I like playing a wizard. All of these spells are really good 
early on. Um, it, it lacks mid-game potential. You don't have any really good mid-game nukes. Um, the idea is that this will get you through the early game and, and the early mid-game, and then hopefully you can find a spell book that will have um, some kind of nuke, some kind of direct damage to where you can branch off into that school of magic. So if I find like an earth book that has you know, a mid-level earth nuke, then I'll, I will just become an earth mage, basically. Um, but I will already have really good spells like Blink and Repel Missiles, Mephitic Cloud. Um, so I want all these spells. Uh, but the first one I think I'm going to go for is Call Imp. I think that it's really, these are really good as damage soaks in this game. Okay, so I couldn't memorize it because I have to be level 2. I have to be equal to that level of the spell to learn it. So I actually can't memorize it, so I'm just going to have to level up to level 2. Um, the... Um, now I'm, I'm doing a lot of talking in this in this video. Um, my intention is to explain everything in detail um, that I encounter. Um, so, you know, just this, but the first part of this is me just getting my uh, my, my setup going, and I want to make sure I explain uh, what I'm doing. So the sec the the next thing I'm going to do is if I hit um, the slash key, which is above the enter key, um, this is a um, auto pickup basically of items that my character will automatically pick up throughout the game. Now, the, I like to turn on, um, if you see it down here, anything with a plus symbol is stuff that I will automatically pick up when I'm auto-exploring. Anything with a minus is stuff that my character will ignore. Um, I'm fine with everything here, um, except for I like to do, um, when I'm playing a spellcaster, I like to um, turn on unknown magical staves, because they, they can be good, and I don't want to walk past them. And then... I also turn on miscellaneous for every character. Um, if you go all the way at the bottom, it says other items. I turn on miscellaneous because that's stuff like deck of cards, um, uh, evocable items that do crazy things. I'm not really sure why they have it turned off, to be honest with you, like default, um, but I just turn it on. And then if I'm playing some kind of ranged character, or I plan to be a ranged character, you can turn on missiles, any one of these missiles. Um, that way you have you're picking up the missiles uh, as you go instead of having to go back later and find them all um, but I'm not gonna be ranged um, I'm gonna pick up needles though because needles are a good alternative if I run out of MP um, and I'll pick up throwing nets because you never know I doubt I'll use them but I can always drop them later and I think that's it I maybe we'll pick up a uh, a needle I mean a blowgun at some point for the needles Needles are really good. I should you should probably always turn those on because if you can get like uh, cuz the poison needles with a blowgun are just really good early game. And then if you can get curare needles, which are like super poison and slow, it's it's ridiculous. Um so let's go ahead and get started here. Um actually, well, one last thing. Um now, casting spells um in this game is the Z key. So if I press Z, it's going to say, you know, um right now it's only magic dart, uh but well, no, it's, so I press Z, and then I have to pick a spell that I want to cast. Now, it's going to say, I can press, um, I can do question mark or the asterisk symbol. I'll, I do the asterisk, because that's what I'm used to. So you press Shift 8, and it'll give me a list of my spells again, and then I can pick one from here. So your spells are, are going to have letters next to them, A through Z, you know, depending on how many spells you have. Um, and then you just pick, push that letter, and then your character will now um, will cast that spell. Now, because there's no targets in front of me, I can't, it didn't let me, it's saying I, there's no monsters in range, so, you know, don't cast it. Um, but I can hold, I can press Shift Z, which will make me, which will make my character cast it, even though there's not an enemy around. That's, this is good for invisible enemies, because um, you, you can't see them, so you can't target them, but you just press Shift Z if you know where they're at, and you can still hit them with spells. Um, and then you just move your target around and press, um the 5 key on the numpad to, to use it and just like that you fire a spell it's simple as that um, the thing I like to do is basically um, you're gonna be doing a lot of spell casting as a spell caster obviously so instead of pressing um, Z and then A and then targeting every time I want to cast a spell I have to press Z A or, or Z B or Z C depending on whatever spell I want to cast so I like to narrow it down to one button because it's a lot easier especially because I'm gonna be spamming these spells a lot um, so what I do is I hit the um, I hold shift and I press the I don't know what this what this thing is hyphen or uh, I don't know um, but it's right next to the one key it, and you just press shift and press that button and it's gonna say 
it's going to give you these options of stuff like your key mappings you can change and everything. But I'm worried about macros. And if I just press M, lowercase m, uh, it, this is a macro. So now it's saying input macro trigger key. So what I'm attempting to do here is I'm going to take the two buttons to cast a spell and change it into one. So what I'm going to do is it wants to know what button do you want to do like the quick cast basically. So I, I use my all my function keys, all my F through 10 or whatever um, to, to cast my spells. At least F through 5 for like my main spells and then I'll pick this any more spells and then I usually just end up manually casting them. But to start out I'm going to do F1 and then it's going to say uh, what do you want it to, uh, what do you want it to be like what do you want the, the function to do now I already have mine set up because the game remembers it so here it, when it asks you what you want the action to be you would just press ZA just like I have it ZA and then enter and then from now on whenever you press F1 it's automatically going to press ZA which is my magic um, my magic dart so you want you to do that you just save it and then now every time I press F1 it's casting magic dart and it's so much easier than pressing Z A target. You just press F1, 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 and and it's just a lot easier. And you'll have to do that for all your function keys, um, but just one time because the game remembers it. So just do the same thing. Just go through the macros, hit F2, then do Z B, enter, and then hit F3, and then do Z C, enter. And then once you set up like the first five, that's usually really all you need, like five or six, and then you're good to go. I mean, you can do all of them, but I just do like the first five or six. Um, so here we go. We're ready to fight. We need to hit level two so we can learn our spells. Um, so I'm going to press F1 here to cast my magic dart, and I'm just going to keep hitting him. Now I'm fragile, but magic dart's pretty good early on. Um, now I don't have a weapon starting as a spellcaster, so I'm, I'm going to pick up the first weapon I see. Um, so I'm going to take this short sword here. Um, now kobolds, you don't chop up their corpses. You can see anything in gray in the text is kind of useless to you. So you see how the cobalt corpse is in like a light, like a faded gray. That's because the cobalt corpses are poisonous and you don't want to chop them up and eat them. So you just ignore them. Um, and here, um, so I'm going to step back and let this guy come to me because he spotted me. And I'm just going to hit him with magic missile. And my magic is now down to 5 out of 7. And whenever you're done a fight, always rest to full. Because, you, I mean, as tempting as it is just to run back in there... Um, you just don't want to do that because now you only have five magic darts as opposed to seven and who knows how many enemies are going to come at you. Just always, always, if you can kill one enemy, rest. Kill one enemy, rest. And that will, that will make your characters live a lot longer. Um, the second thing to make your characters live longer is to do not chase enemies and do not fight enemies where you spot them. Um, so what I'm going to do is... I mean, normally I'm just going to do auto explore and let it do its thing. So here I, f I found a a um, a hobgoblin, right? So I could just start hitting him and everything and be good here. But what you want to do is it, the, the the safest spot for you to be is on a set of steps going up back to the previous level. But obviously we're on the first level, we can't do that. But the second thing you want to do is if you can't be on a set of steps, is um, to just walk back to where. He actually didn't see me, so let's let's make him see me. So he, the question mark means he's aware, he's like roaming around, but he hasn't noticed me yet. Um, so I'm gonna get his attention by hitting him with a magic dart, um, and now I could just hit hit him with another another magic dart and he would die. But just for example, I want to pull him away from the unknown area because as you're shooting spells, you're making noise. Now some spells make more, more noise than others, um, but you don't want enemies just to keep coming because out of that darkness that you can't see because you don't know what's there. So you'd rather you want to go to you want to pull them to a safe spot to where I know I've already been here. There's no enemies, and I'm going to fight him here. Um, now I generally would would like to pull him into a narrow corridor as well, um, where he can't uh, move around me and like like right for example this corridor right here like this is perfect. So here I'll let him walk into the corridor. And this is where, that's how you want to fight um, most of your enemies. It keeps them in a straight line. It keeps you from, oh, you only get hit by one enemy at a time if there's only one in front of you. So whenever whenever you can, fight enemies in corridors. So whenever there's like a single line corridor, try to pull your enemies into that corridor. So here I am in trouble because I'm an idiot and I, I started this fight with low mana. And actually I picked up a short sword so I should be wielding this. I'm going to wield the short sword. Now, I shouldn't fight this roach with a short sword. I'm going to wait and 
and run away. Um, now, even though it both it takes us both one turn to run, to move in a direction, um, basically to keep that to keep you from just run, running around and just getting your mana back and then tr and then fighting him. Uh, as you're running, there's a chance that the enemies will get like an extra turn basically, and they'll be able to hit you and as you're and move next to you at the same time. So, well, as safe as this might seem, it's actually not because he's. He's take he's actually taking hits at me even though it only takes him one turn to move. It's just kind of their way of keeping you from kiting enemies um, around the map. So once they're in melee, you're pretty much you you're just at risk. They're right there. I took a hit. I mean, I'm I'm just taking damage. But I'm gonna just keep doing it. You don't, you definitely don't just want to wait in place for your mana because then you're giving him more chances than if you are walking. If you're walking, he's still hitting you, but he's hitting you less than if you were just standing in front of him. Um, so now I got some mana back. So I'm gonna try the magic darts. One, two three and that's it was enough and that's that so I hit level two so now I'm gonna rest get my always get your health and mana back um, and now I hit level two so I'm gonna memorize um, some of these spells I have eight spell levels let me get a drink um, I want all of these pretty much I would definitely want call and first yes um, I'm, I'm gonna just learn all of these because I mean if a lot of spell books like I won't learn some of them because I don't I don't find the uses for all of them but uh, this particular spell book is just really good and I like all the spells so now in my spell inventory now by pressing shift and I um, I have all these spells um, so what I can do is I want to get Call Imp to a safer number. Uh, Magic Dart's pretty good now. 6% is is good. Um, so I want to get Call Imp down. So all I have to do is get get my get my summonings up to level 2 instead of 1. Like right now they're level 1. So if I get them up to level 2, it should drop my Call Imp spell down to like an 8% chance or something like that. You'd be surprised. Um, the early level spells, they, they're... You know, every point you get in their school, it really decreases their um, their chance of failure by a lot. But the higher level spells are not so easy. I mean, you'll spend forever trying to learn how to cast like Firestorm or something. But that's way later. Um, so I'm gonna, and it's very important, very very important that you pay attention to the chat log and you realize when you've hit um, level two of summonings. It'll tell you in the chat. And what you don't want to do is forget about it and go up to like 2.5, because you, in the first video I told you that you only get um, the benefits when you hit a full number. Uh, so so 2.5 is the same as two, except I've wasted 0.5 uh, amount of experience in it basically. So you never want to. I mean, it, sometimes it happens you forget about it, but you don't want to. And generally, if I do that, if I forget about it and I get it to 2.5, then I'll say screw it and just let it go to three because it, that's that's makes more sense than leaving it at 2.5. Um, so here we got Nemelex. I'm not going to go with him. I'm going to go with a simple caster build, probably Sif Muna, because I'm comfortable with her and she is the easy easiest god for spell casting. Um, let me chop these guys up. Oh, we got some leather armor. Okay, so rune leather armor so um so let's see here let's look at um let's look at our spells here so you look at my failure rate it's 6 10 17 and 17 now when you wear armor have the heavier the armor the more it's going to hinder your spell casting generally anything above leather armor is going to make it's going to be almost impossible for you to cast like anything except for level one, level one spells so let's just see how bad leather armor affects us so let's put this on let me I forgot what it was. 6, 10, 17, 17. So let's wear this and see where we're at. Wow. You see how bad that is? They, I think they changed this in a recent patch. They made leather armor affect you a lot more. Um, basically trying to, I guess, nerfing spellcasters. Uh, here's the problem is that this armor is cursed, and, which means I can't take it off. Um, so I'm now stuck with very poor casting ability, um, and I can't get rid of it. So and I don't have any scrolls, so this is this is kind of bad for us early on. This is a, not looking good for our for our frazzle here. Um, but we here's a shiny chainmail. Chainmail we're definitely not gonna be able to wear. I want to find a um, a scroll of remove curse as soon as possible so I can reliably cast my spells. Um, but we should be okay on the first level and probably the second level. But I really want to. 
Let's see here. Call imps at 17. 10, 7. Yeah. 17 is not terrible, terrible, but it's not good. That's unfortunate. Um, all right. Oh, now, the, the other thing I didn't show in this in the first video that will make your life a lot easier is, yes, I showed you how to walk to a stairs and then walk down the stairs. Um, but there's faster ways. There's a lot of faster ways. Um, if you press Shift G, and remember, just you know, use the um, controls I gave you. Um, Shift G is like go, basically, is how I, I interpret it. And it's going to say, oh, where do you want to go? And then it's going to say it's going to give you options. As of right now, we only know that about the dungeon. There's a lot more levels, but we know about the dungeon. So I'm going to hit D for dungeon, and it's going to say what level do you want to go to? And I'm like, and I know that I can only go down. So I'm going to say, okay, let's go to level two. And my character will automatically go to the, go to the, to the closest set of steps and go down to detail. Um, that's how I do how I go down to the next level. Um, I'll I'll show you some other ways later on, but I don't want to for the sake of just getting into it here. I don't want to. Uh, talk too much. I mean, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking, but it is what it is. Um, Alright, so I got a scroll. So I'm, this is one of the rare cases where I'm going to just read every scroll. Yeah, okay. So that was a scroll remove curse. So we got lucky there. So uh, let's put back on our robes. Because leather armor, it gives us extra armor, uh, but they've made it worse to where it really affects your, your spell casting. Now that little yellow symbol above him means he's friendly. Um, it's this is like an altar. Uh, that's that's kind of her thing. She made him friendly, and yeah. So we're not gonna fuck with that. Now you see this. Somebody's got the level two immediately. I'm done. It's at 2.1. I'm not. I'm not. That's fine. I killed one enemy. I got a little more experience, but that that's not a big deal. So now if I go to my my call imp, uh, it's actually still at 10%. 6, 10, 17, 17. Huh. Bringing it to two didn't help. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. I did take it off, didn't I? Yep, I did. All right, so the second level didn't help me. The third level will definitely do it. Um, do I want it to get below ten? Was it at was it at twelve before or ten? Wait a minute. I think it was ten. Um, yeah, I want to get it below ten. I think call imps is really good early on. Um, so we're gonna. And what what spell is that? B. Yep. Okay. So. We'll keep that in, in mind. We'll let it get to three. Oh, do not try to melee when you are a spellcaster because you will die. So we'll rest. Um, and here I'm going to shoot a bolt. It kills him instantly. Uh, so we're pretty good here. Keep chopping up these corpses. Here's a challenge. I'm poisoned pretty bad. Uh, let's see if the poison is going to kill me. I don't think it is. You have reached level 3. Okay. Whenever it comes up like that, sometimes you'll see it will freeze your screen to where you can't do anything. Just press spacebar. It basically wants you to accept that you've leveled up and like, hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at this message. Just press spacebar. Yeah, I think I might die from the poison. Um, we'll see. So, your experience leads. So, I get to pick strength, intelligence, or dexterity. As a spellcaster, always go intelligence. Intelligence um, improves your mana, the your ability to cast spells I think less so it increases your magic and more so it increases your ability to cast spells like that it'll reduce your failure uh, your failure chance for all your spells uh, let's see if that helps yeah see that um, it went all the way down to uh, to six, from 10 to 6 now it's not always gonna jump like that um, the reason it it's just it's just how the math works you know what I mean like there's formulas that you can go to the wiki and and you can look at um type in intelligence on the on the wiki and it'll tell you exactly what the you know what it affects and then you can go to spell casting and it'll tell you the formula for how it reduces everything all the spell failures and what's more important i mean i don't have all this memorized i just have an, an idea about what's important and what i should prioritize am i gonna die from this poison come on poison don't kill me Okay, I'm good. I just gotta kill this guy first. Okay, that was close. Um, all right, so I'm just wait. what I was doing there. I'm just pressing five, um, the on the numpad, not the regular five, and I'm waiting one turn. Every turn, I'm just waiting one turn and letting the seeing what the poison's doing. Um, if I guess if I start getting low, and I see the poison is still red, like you saw how the poison text was red when it, on the top right, it showed me poison. It was red, and then it went to yellow, and then it went away. 
Uh, red means you're severely poisoned. Yellow means you're poisoned, and then it just goes, it fades away over time. So I'm just kind of waiting at one turn at a time to see if my poison is decreasing. Um, and if I would have still been poisoned at this point, I would have started. I would have quaffed this potion that I have in my inventory and hope for the and hope for the best and just hope that it's a potion of curing or a potion of heal wounds. If it wasn't, then you just die, and that's how the game goes. You and <laughs> that's what it is. Um, Shouldn't have been poisoned by that snake. Now, snakes are really fast. You definitely can't outrun snakes. Um, the faster the enemy is, uh, the easier time they'll have attacking you while moving. So, like, like the roach from earlier, like, he had, he was getting less attacks on me, but he was still attacking me. But, like, the snake is moved so fast that it's almost pointless to try to run away because they're getting almost... I mean, don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe they're getting more attacks than the roach would because they're faster they're getting more attacks um, like I said I don't know the exact science on all this stuff I just know the 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 roundabout I've played enough times to where when I've tried to run from a snake it's like he's hitting you every time you move and when you try to run from like a, a slower enemy it's only like every once in a while you get hit um, so just keep that in mind um, just keep nuking everything did this get to level 3 and I didn't pay attention yeah like I said, that's level 3 now Good. So now, if I look at my call imp, now it's down to four percent. Perfect. Very perfect. All right. So now I'm going to go to my memorize list. Um, well, let's look at my inventory again. So this is what. So I'm not. I'm going to use repel missiles and slow at some point, but I'm not really focused on them. What I'm. What I am focused on, if I hit memorize, is I. I know for a fact that I want all three of these spells, but I want probably conjure flame first and then mephitic cloud i want conjure flame and mephitic cloud they are both how you survive in in the mid game specifically well they're they're equal uh you'll see you'll see how i use it. if you've watched my other videos then you, you've seen me use them and how i use them uh blink is important too but right now i think i'm gonna get um conjure flame yes and now i'm out of spell slots so i'm gonna have to level spell casting um, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get spell casting level 5, maybe level 6, and it should go fast because I'm, I have a plus 3 aptitude for being a deep elf. Um, so we're gonna get, we're gonna get some more spell slots. Um, alternatively, my other option is to, to disregard that and just try to get, um, conjure flame going, and by doing that I would just put my points into conjurations or fire magic, um, uh, probably fire magic, get like one point into fire magic. Um, and then maybe that's what I should do. Hmm. Just to get that castable. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that. There's no point in having more spells if you can't cast any of them. You know what I mean? So let's, that, that makes more sense. Let's get fire magic. Now for dual for dual um, dual school spells like this, like this is conjuration of fire. I think the formula is it takes the average of your skills. So if I have a one and a two, um, one zero in fire magic and two in conjuration, it's gonna make it's gonna make me a total of one basically. So, I I guess I don't I, don't, I usually generally level them pretty evenly. So I won't just do conjurations. I'll get conjurations up a little bit, and then you'll find that the higher you get conjurations, it'll stop affecting your 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 success rate so much. And then I'll put a couple into fire magic, and all of a sudden it'll jump up because it take it's taking the average out of all of them, um, which is why it's harder to get like mephitic cloud because it's three schools and it's taking the average out of all of them. Um, so we're gonna get fire magic up to probably level one, and then we'll do conjurations. Um, so here, this guy is—he's uh, our probably our first challenge. He's slow, but he's got regen, so you can't really outrun like kite him around. Um, but we're good there. We got plenty of stuff to do. I should have uh, used summon it. All right, so here, I know the mace is better than the short sword. I believe so. So. I'm gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop also the leather armor. I'm going to grab the mace and I'm gonna wield the mace. Um, we'll do E. Okay. So now we got the mace. Um, and also I have I picked up some jewelry that I didn't know. So I'm gonna try on the jewelry, the ring. I'm gonna try it on, see what it is. Plus two ring of dexterity. So that's that's not bad. I think it increases my dexterity increases your your evasion a little bit. I don't know if this actually increased it if plus two did anything but it's better than not having anything so I'm not gonna take it off um, and then I have that's pretty much it um, so let's continue I got a scroll 
And just keep nuking this guy, nuke that guy. Mm-hmm. Nuke this guy. Oh, so I shouldn't have done that. Should have rested first because I was out of mana. And this is why you'll die in this game because you're an idiot. That, that, that's why. It's not because you... Like, it's not because I don't know how to play the game properly and how to get far. It's just because, like, you get you get going and then you stop, you stop following your own advice. And that's when... That's when you just you just do dumb stuff. Um, so let's look at let's look at conjure flame. Um, I'm gonna do more into conjurations now. Now the reason I'm doing this is because conjurations is gonna be useful for almost all my attack spells. Like almost all attack spells are conjuration spells, so I know it's gonna be useful. But I don't know that I'm gonna be specializing in fire magic, so I'd like to put more of my points into conjurations than I would fire magic. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. Um, here, let's just let's do a summon imp. Now, I've summoned an imp. Um, you can see the heart. It means he's friendly. Um, the purple symbol on the top left of his icon means that he's a summoned unit. Um, and then I'm going to switch places with him. You can switch places if I just move into him. It'll swap places. Now, I can't cast spells like this because I can't shoot past my own enemy. My own, um, my own enemy. My own um, teammate. But, if I press 5 on a numpad to wait one turn, they will duke it out, basically. Like, if I just press 5, it's going to say, what happened? So the adder attacked my Crimson Imp, and my Imp missed the adder. And I just keep doing that. They're missing each other. He finally hits. He teleports, because that's what Imps do. It can be annoying. So then I just move back away. Now here, the adder can still hit me, because you can attack diagonally in this game. So I'm going to go down the corridor. Alright, so here... Um... I, He's in, he's, he's in, he's like, he's in right next to me now. So here I'm just going to fight him. I'm just going to use magic dart. So this is perfect. My imp can hit him and I can hit him. And there you go. Now I'm going to rest, get my mana back, and the imp's going to disappear. And that's pretty much it. So you can see imps are just really good damage. Like soakers, you can put them in between you, like in a small corridor like that, and they just duke it out. They take all the damage, they start doing a bunch of damage, and you're fine. You just sit back. When your imp dies or he disappears, you summon another one, or you or you just finish off the enemy um, and I'm gonna show you a trick too when we get to the next fight the next hard fight so um, gonna, I'm gonna hit uh, go just shift G and then I'm gonna say dungeon 3 alright so here this is why being on stairs is so important anytime you can fight on stairs you always fight on stairs fighting on stairs allows you to take on just massive amounts of enemies that you normally have no business fighting. But because you're on stairs, you're fine. And I'm going to show you. It's called stair dancing. Now, when I go and... These guys are all sleeping. They don't see me. Now, if I nuke... If, I'm, if I hit one of these with magic dart, they're all going to wake up. Um, and they're going to start walking towards me. Actually, as soon as I hit them, they're probably... The gecko is probably going to move next to me. The worm's going to be one space away. Now... Normally, this would be bad. You don't want to. Be, you never want to be attacked by more than one enemy at a time, ever. Like, if you're getting attacked by more than one enemy at a time, you're in trouble. Unless you're like a, a straight melee brute and you just decked out. Always try to fight one at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this guy. He comes next to me. The, the worm woke up. The goblin didn't. Now, instead of continuing to nuke this guy, I'm going to walk back up the stairs. Um, any enemies that are adjacent to you um, are going to follow you up the stairs. Okay, but that's fine because um, there's no, we've already cleared out this level. There's no enemies here. So it's now I've turned a three verse one into a one verse one and I can safely take out this guy. No problem. And on top of that, I can now rest to full health and full mana and then go back down the steps. Okay, that fucking hurt. Um, and fight this worm. Um, I'm going to have to, okay, so here's the second thing. That was that was very bad. He did a lot of damage. Um like a whole lot of damage. So, when you walk up when you're stair dancing like this, every time you go up a set of stairs or down a set of stairs and there's enemies next to you, they get a free shot. They will have like a free attack on you going up when you're trying to leave the steps. Um when you're trying to go up the steps. So, if I go up the steps here, there's a good chance I just die. Um because he's just going to get a free hit and I just die. So, I don't want to do that. Now I know from playing this game that worms are pretty slow. Uh, if this was a fast enemy, I'd probably be dead. I'd have to just hope that I nuke him before he kills me. Um, here, 
I think. Now, this is all dependent. This is dangerous. Whenever you're running away, you never want to run into the darkness and into the unexplored area. So I'm going to run north, but I'm only doing that because I don't really think I have another choice. Now, if, it, if I had the option, I, I would run into an area that I've already explored that I know is safe. Now, the risk of this is I could run north. Yeah, I might escape the worm, but I'm going to run into other enemies, and I'm going to be at low health, and now I have a worm following me and new enemies in front of me. And there's a good chance that I'm going to die here. Um, but I have to do it. I'm not going to go up the steps. If I can break, if I can get away from adjacent from him, if I can like create a space between us, then I can, by the time I get to those steps going down, I'll probably go down the steps um, and hope there's no enemies down there and um, that'll allow me to heal. I'm hoping. Um, this is not a good situation to be in. Uh, now, I didn't, I didn't know that when you go down the steps, you get a, they get a free hit when you get when you go down I actually didn't know that um, but we are gonna see what happens here okay perfect so I've created a space he's slow that's the only reason I got to do this um, now let's look at our spells huh I could try no if I try to summon an imp the problem with that is he's gonna be next to me again because it's gonna take me a turn to summon the imp so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna go down the steps or no, I'm not. Because um, I don't see any enemies over here. Um, and then the steps might have enemies if I go down. And I don't see enemies on the right. So I'm going to go right. Alright. Okay. So this is okay. I'm okay. This is a, this is just a goblin. A hop goblin. I can deal with this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off. I'm going to attempt to cut off the worm by summoning an imp. And I miscast it. Okay, so now I'm going to swap places with this imp. this imp. This is a good imp. This imp doesn't... The black ones do not teleport around, and they have a good um, draining attack, I believe. So I'm going to swap places with him, so that that way the worm can't get to me. Um, and then I'm going to kill the goblin, the, the hobgoblin, because I know I can kill him before he gets to me. So there's that. Now I'm going to use magic dart on the goblin. And now I've killed him. I'm going to... Here's the thing. Next trick. Um... If I were to just walk away here, if I just start running away, sometimes your summoning AI will just walk towards you. They'll they'll leave the enemy and they'll just keep following you. That's not what I want because then he's not stopping the worm from getting to me. So a command that I always use whenever I play a summoner, this is kind of specific, it's only if you use summons, but if you press T, lowercase T, this is the order, this is like a shout key. And this get, allows you to give orders to all of your friendlies. So here I always press T and I'm going to say A for attack new target. And I hit A and I target the worm and press enter. Now the, the, the uh, shadow imp will continue to attack the worm even if I move away. And those two will keep duking it out until one of them dies or the imp disappears. And that gives me time to... Um, to, to get away, create a lot of distance between me and the worm, and to basically just set up. Get my, I'll, I'll be able to regenerate some health and some magic. I'll be able to summon another imp, which I'm probably going to do right now. So I miscast it because my cat, my how I, I miscast. I had a four percent chance to miscast it, and I and I miscast it. Uh, but that's is what it is. Now you can see the shadow imp is pretty strong, and he's taking on the worm pretty well. But just to be safe. Um, the beast of the beast. My shadow imp got killed. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Tell my uh, my imp to go after the worm. I don't want to go through that guy. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Here. And this guy, he's. Oh god, this is very bad. Um. Let's do let's do shift X or control X. Wheeling oh my god, this is terrible. Alright. So what I did there is I know that this dagger, this um this kobold, um, he's he's got an enchanted dagger. I can tell because I can see the colors different. Now you guys won't be able to pick this up until you've seen enough uh enough of these weapons. Um it'll tell you in the chat, it'll when you first see the enemy, it'll say, Oh, it's a kobold wearing a wielding a dagger of freezing. And you um and that's fine, but if you miss that, um, 
you you need to know this because because he has a dagger of freezing he is 10 times more dangerous than if you didn't have a dagger of freezing um so what i did is there's there's the, i press um control and x and it's going to give me a list of everything interesting that i can see around me um and it tells me in a list like hey there's a kobold up oh, he's wielding a dagger of freezing and if i also want to know more information about these enemies like what they're resistant to and how strong they are, I can I can press the letter associated with that monster. Like I can click on this kobold, and it's going to target him. And then if I press V, um, V is like the examine or button. It'll explain like what basically everything about him, how much evasion he has, his armor class, how strong he is, all that good stuff. Um, but here, what am I going to do? Um, this is not good. I'm I'm gonna try to read some of these scrolls. I think yes. I'm gonna hope for a scroll of like teleportation or a scroll of fear. Scroll of identify. All right. I'm gonna reveal this potion because it might be a potion of healing or something. It's a potion of curing. I'm gonna quaff the potion of curing. Okay. I healed a lot. I'm gonna swap places with my imp, and I'm gonna go back down this corridor. Perfect. Okay, now the two most threatening enemies are now behind me. Um, I'm going to see if I can summon this imp. I miscast it again with a 4% chance. Man, the luck's not very good. And now I have enough space. Um, the most threatening enemy is not next to me because he's behind this kobold. So this is a regular kobold. I'm okay with fighting him. So now I'm just going to walk up the steps. He's going to get a free hit on me, probably. Um, he barely missed me. Um, and now I can just melee him. And now we're safe. That was extremely dangerous. Um, so now I'm just going to fully heal. Um, I don't... Now, in this situation, now I know there's a kobold that's got a dagger of freezing, which I would like to have, but I don't want to go down there and have him be next to me and me get instantly hit like I did with the worm, which is probably what's going to happen. Um, so when you know that, don't go back down there. Like, you know they're right there. You know there's a worm that's that's fucking me up. There's a... A guy with a dangerous weapon that can probably one-shot me. I don't know if, it's, if it would actually one-shot me, but it would be close. Um, so what you do is there's always three sets of stairs that go up and down to the next level. Um, so I'm just going to go to the next set of steps uh, and go down a different way. And I'll encounter him again, but I'll encounter him at range to where I won't have to deal with the, the dagger or the worm. So, actually, I, now I'm not going down an escape hatch. If you watch the first video, never, ever go down an escape hatch. There's a one way, and if you drop into dangerous shit, you are basically screwed. Um, so I'm going to go go down the steps. I'm going to rest, get my HP back, and where are we at? Conjuration is two. Um, let's go down the steps. Okay, so this is not a good area either, but I'm not scared because I can stare dance. So I'm going to go up. Yeah, they got some hits on me, no big deal. I'm just going to kill him. Okay, chop, and then I'm going to rest, full health, go back down. Uh, nuke one, nuke one, nuke one, nuke one, nuke one. All right, now before this um, snake gets adjacent to me, so I'm going to go up the stairs so he, he can't go out with me. And now I'm going to take on this goblin by itself. I'm going to rest. Um, I'm a little scared of the snake, but uh, hopefully I'll be all right and go back. Now here I'm not going to go back up because they're both going to go up anyway and they'll just get a free attack if I go up the stairs. So I'm just going to kill this. I'm going to kill the snake first because he's most dangerous. Okay. And then the rat should be easy. Yep. And get this. Kill this guy. Grab the scroll of identify. Um, Alright. Alright. Conjurations is three. What's our conjure flame? Conjure flame's getting there. I'm going to leave it on because I want Conjure Flame. I'll probably let it get to level 4. Um, and then we'll be good. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I want Spellcasting. <sighs> because I really need more more magic. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of MP. Um, occasionally. Oh, we don't want this music. I want Atmospheres. Um, so I don't want to run out of MP, and also it'll give me my spell slots that I'm going to need anyway to, to, to learn more spells. Um, and I'm, I'm with 14%, it's not great, yeah, but if I need to use it, which I probably will, I'm, I'm confident enough that it'll succeed. Um, no, I don't want to enter explore mode. Oh, that was bad. 
Alright. Now we're gonna run. Um, so the orc wizards. Orc packs are gonna be your first challenge, most likely, when, when you make a character. Um, orc packs are extremely dangerous, um, mainly because of the orc wizards, and even more dangerous, the orc priests. Um, the orc wizards will cast invisibility, they'll be attacking you when you can't see them, they have range attacks, um, they got, I think they got haste, I think it'll tell me actually. So here it's telling me that out of the, it, it, it's going to have some of these, one of these three books, and depending on which one it is, depending on what it can cast. So it, it can do haste, blink, magic dart, slow, and the percentage next to slow and confuse is how much of a percent chance it has to affect me. Um, so it's, he's got like a 50% chance of affecting me. Now, I want to at least get them in a corridor because they will quickly surround you. So here's good. I'm going to summon the imp. I'm going to tell the imp to attack the wizard. He cast haste on himself. That's what that uh, little triangle thing means in the top right. My imp should go after him. He's probably going to die. Yep. Alright. Now I'm going to just magic dart this guy to death. Alright. So he blinked away. That's fine. He can't hit me while he's got uh, his buddy in front of him. Okay, the snake sucks. I hate fighting snakes. It's gonna poison me. Yep, I'm probably gonna die from the poison. All right. Um. Oh, this is bad. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the poison's probably it's probably gonna maybe not. Um. All right, let's try waiting it out. Let me feel sick. Hopefully, the fucking wizards. Is he might hopefully he's not invisible, otherwise I'm in trouble. Go away, poison. Okay, I'm not poisoned. Okay, we're good. Alright, there's a jackal here. He hasn't seen me. I'm gonna break line of sight by running north. And then I'm gonna attempt to rest. Nope, he saw me. I'm gonna I should be able to kill him before he gets to me. I did. Now jackals are also really dangerous. They're probably a little bit weaker than the orc packs. They are weaker than orc packs, but they are extremely fast, and they sur they always travel in packs, and they will surround you very fast. They are especially you don't want to fight them in the open. You want to drag them into corridors because they will surround you and kill you. Um, so here I'm going to try to rest. So now the next one's going to come. And the next one. That's fine. They're weak, but the the thing is you just don't want to be surrounded. Um, so here, the wizard is scaring me now. So, I want to use summon imp. I'm going to tell him to attack, and I die. And that, just like that, see, that was done. that's just how the game goes. Um, he, uh, I summoned the imp, but the imp, he still had range, and he hit me with a magic dart, and I died. Um, so that's just that's how the game goes, unfortunately. Um, so I think I'm going to end this video here. Um, I think it's fitting that I, uh, I die. Even I think I, I died in both tutorial videos. Uh, I think that's fitting for Dungeon Crawl. Um, but I think I was able to um, teach you guys a lot of, uh, of the nitty gritty about, um, about running through the, uh, this is the basics and exploration and spell, you being a spellcaster in general. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, guys.